Uh, yeah, so our uh, project is exploring the interplay uh, between outdoor adventure, uh, well-being and uh, culture. So I'm from the UK, obviously Manuel and Carola are from Germany and Jelena is from Serbia, who isn't with us today. So um, just going to take you through firstly in our presentation and what led us to do this research on a few key points about um, adventure, um, a bit of contact context really. So adventure is, as we probably know, a culturally uh, constructed concept, uh, which means that there are likely to be uh, different uh, national differences in the way that we uh, perceive and associate uh, ourselves with adventure and our participation in adventure activities. Um, and as Hofstede said, and um, has done quite a lot of research has the mic gone? No. Um, on this, um, national cultures shape individual values, um, beliefs, expectations, decision making processes. Um, and so, in essence, really, uh, culture does have an influence in the way that we um, uh, perceive and experience, perhaps experience, adventure. Um, um, there is, has been a limited research, amount of research on the role of adventure, uh, role of culture in adventure. Um, and the research that has been done tends to have been done uh, with non-Westernized cultures uh, or nationalities such as Chinese and Japanese uh, compared to uh, more Westernized cultures. And what uh, that, that research by the likes of uh, Cheng and Shang and Liu and Williams et al. has found is that there are quite marked contrasts in the way that, say, Chinese or Japanese um, adventurers or people experience um, adventure and also perceive adventure um, and also the product offerings in those different countries so for example in China there is a kind of different way of um, offering whitewater rafting um, which is um, highly modified for the Chinese domestic tourist um, and is, is a different and, and perhaps less adventurous experience than whitewater rafting as we know it now, <laughs> or as most of us um, will have experienced it if we have. Um, so um, what um, there hasn't been quite so much of is research that looks at the difference um, in, within westernized countries, so where cultures are a lot more um, similar such as our, our cultures that we're looking at in this uh, project, um, so different European cultures in our case. Um, and I guess the, the other thing to say before we move on is that the, there is a westernized model of adventure which has kind of been developed from uh, a lot of um, industry and academic researchers um, putting forward their ideas about what, um, what adventure is and what it should be in terms of adventure recreation or adventure tourism. Um, and um, it is actually seemingly, um, as we see more research, on non-westernized cultures, it's a bit more kind of a, a different, um, a different way that non-westernized, uh, that westernized cultures actually perceive and experience adventure. So, so the literature on uh, from non-west, uh, from westernized uh, cultures is becoming a lot more dominant now in the adventure literature and taking uh, things forward in a different way in terms of the way that we perceive adventure and, and also its role in well-being. So in, with all that blurb and that context, our aim is to investigate adventurers from Germany, Serbia and the UK, uh, because we think there are likely to be, uh, well, subtle cultural differences, but um, more obvious cultural similarities uh, between uh, uh, the different participants in those countries. So we, have, we started off with uh, five uh, research questions. The first one relates to the first piece of research that we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. Um, we started off with, with a literature review to see what the key subjective well-being themes are uh, and, and which ones are prominent in existing adventure research. So we talk a lot about uh, well-being but what does it actually mean and what are its different components and how is it represented in, uh, in the adventure um, research. And uh, secondly, then we decided to, obviously, this stage of our research, look at the perceptions and meanings of, um, uh, that different cultures have of outdoor adventure activities. So we'll be reporting a little bit on our preliminary findings around that. And then thirdly, how does our cultural background influence uh, perception um, in outdoor um, adventure activities? Or does it, 
does it influence um, our perception of adventure with these three different uh, nationalities of adventurers? And then, uh, fourthly, what subjective well-being benefits do different cultures gain from engaging with um, outdoor adventure activities? Are there any are there any differences? What are the similarities? And then, fifthly, and importantly for for this conference, because we know we recognise that there are a lot of industry practitioners here as well as academics, uh, what are the implications for practitioners and for future research? as well in, in, of an academic or industry nature in outdoor adventure activities. Okay, so, so over okay. to Carola. I give you a very short um, uh, yeah, overview. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I give you a short overview um, about our methodology. Uh, in fact, stage one of our project is uh, completed already. This is what um, Jill told you already. We conducted an extensive systematic liter literature review to examine the key subjective well-being themes within existing adventure tourism and adventure recreation literature from 1990 to uh, 2021. And from this review, Five interrelated meter themes emerged, and uh, Manuel will present them in a second because they are really ex uh, very um, important for our um, uh, current um, uh, project. So, in the moment, currently, we are uh, in second phase, uh, in the second phase of our project, and uh, in order to better understand to what extent the identified uh, meter themes play a role on a subjective level and to be able to identify cultural influences on the perception meaning of adventure. We are currently conducting semi-structured interviews um, with committed adventure participants, in fact, for example, hikers, runners, uh, sailors, horse riders. And of course, we pay attention that they are of different ages and that they come from Serbia, of course, um, UK and uh, Germany. So parallel, we are... Um, already beginning um, with stage three. Uh, we are analyzing uh, these interviews with the help of content analysis. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as you already heard a few times today, there are so many well-being benefits of outdoor adventures. We kind of use that term. Um, and we try to, to make sense of what they are and how it all works. And we came up with this framework as um, agreeing that there are different aspects that influence subjective well-being, but um, I think as we all agree, adventure activity participation is one important element to gain subjective well-being, to maintain your subjective well-being, and also to enhance the subjective and we think that once you get hooked by adventure, and I'm sure you all agree, this will make you do it all over again so you can maintain and uh, enhance your subjective well-being through your outdoor adventure activities. And um, there's so many different aspects, and a lot of them talk about well-being, but there's a lot of research that just talks about flow, for example, or other aspects that we think that play, a, uh, or play an important role in the terms of well-being. We came up with this five meters to our that's what these lines should uh, demonstrate because we think there's a lot of overlap and it's dif difficult to separate them from each other. But just to quickly show you the, the meta themes all are all about. Jill, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, first, first of all, there's extraordinary experiences, which is sort of the natural highs you get. It's also about and peak experiences. Then we have the immersion and transformation uh, meta theme. It's a lot about deceleration, um, getting away from your desk and doing things you normally don't do in your life, uh, but also resonating with nature and immersion in nature. Then we have personal development. Um, you get your individual identity through your adventure sports. Um, you learn new things, how to abseil, for example. Maybe some of you did just a few minutes ago. And it also helps you to develop full potential in terms of flourishing. And the physical and mental balance sorry i'm just going and coming back again right um which is a lot about physical and mental health but also about um coping and overcoming challenges because we think that's an important aspect that you learn outdoors how to deal with challenges and then transfer it to everyday life um last but not least oh by the way i should mention the the length of the lines um represents how many findings we had within the studies we looked at 
Um, so it doesn't mean that they are the most important, but they are the most researched at the moment. And um, community, uh, we had collective identity being part of a group with similar interests and their ambitions doing things through nature, like a lot of you do, I guess. And we tried to make this short and simple, but we're happy to talk about them all night. More just uh, approaches. Yeah, and uh, as I already mentioned, uh, currently we are in the middle of the interview phase. Uh, and the interviews uh, are being conducted on the basis of an interview guideline. You see um, a part of the interview guideline on the uh, right side of the slide. Um, in fact, it um, includes 43 questions. And uh, in addition to the five uh, MeToo themes, the guide also includes biographical questions, questions about the cultural background, as well as questions about what the interviewees perceive as the most important effects of the activities on their well-being. So in the following, we show you some examples of preliminary uh, results and approaches to interpretation on four selected uh, questions. So the aim is uh, really to give you a short, but hopefully interesting insight, a snapshot of our research, which will be uh, much bro broader, of course. Yeah. So um, just to make it easy for everybody, we decided to go by flags for nationality. So um, what you'll see in bold there is um, are the key themes that have come out of the interviews so far, and they are only at the f initial stages. So we've got plenty more interviews uh, that we'd like to do. Um, and the um, text that is in italics, you'll see are just exam example quotes from directly from the interviews. And they're just there for you to kind of have a bit of a browse through as I'm talking. Um, but in terms of some of the similarities, um, we found that um, all nationalities so far um, are um, very common in, in the perception of adventure of, of it being challenging. Um, and also um, they associate adventure with novelty um, and also going out of the comfort zone. And those are a lot of themes that we've already talked about um, so far um, in, in this morning session as well. Um, and also notably similarities, true, um, the idea that true adventures that we have true adventures, but we don't always plan for adventures. So we may go out and do an act, start to do an activity. Um, and then there could be uh, changes in our dynamic natural environment, such as changes in the weather or um, unex un unexpected um, circumstances occurring. And then we may find that we're actually having an adventure. So what we found with some of the interviews is that people say, well, we don't deliberately set out to put ourselves at risk or to really challenge ourselves so, so much that we're so absolutely terrified, but sometimes that happens, but then we overcome it and then we're, we're, you know, we, we feel good about ourselves, but we definitely feel we've had an adventure. Um, and in terms of um, the differences, what we found so far is that the, the, um, the slight differences between the UK and the Serbian interviewees in that, um, that uh, fear, risk and danger or, or, and challenge perhaps is slightly more important for our UK adventurers than um, our Serb Serbian um, adventurers. Um, and, and I'm sure we'll, we'll find different perspectives coming up as we progress with our interviews as well. Um, and also um, another slight difference is that in Germany, um, what we find is that um, adventure is, is perceived in, in either a really extreme way as, as one um, perception or a less extreme way, which Carola will talk about in terms of image of adventure that is portrayed um, uh, through branding in a, in a couple of minutes. But um, I think we do that in the UK as well. Um, but we, we, may, we may regard um, our activities as, as adventurous even when they're not extreme. But in Germany, it has to be re apparently really, really quite extreme um, for, for some people to see it as an adventure. Yes. Uh. Okay, uh, let's uh, take a look at um, what has shaped our informants' affinity for outdoors uh, and adventure, how important they consider the influence of their culture to be, and how they rate the social image of adventure activities. As far as the similarities are concerned, the first thing that stands out is that in Germany and uh, the UK, the interest uh, in outdoor adventure is fueled by family, parents, and being generally active, mostly um, since early childhood. 
we had that the, in this morning already uh, in one presentation that um, uh, how you grow up is really important. Uh, outdoor clubs and organizations such as scouts um, influence adventure per perceptions for all three nationalities. As far as uh, the main differences are concerned, it is interesting to note that the affinity for outdoor activities in Serbia is rather individual and um, not strongly culturally rooted. The culture sees itself rather than um, as an urban and indoor based uh, culture. It is also noticeable in comparison that in the UK, outdoor activities are now relatively um, well established and accessible in schools, outdoor clubs and the scout movement. Although there's also, of course, uh, um, still something to improve. But in Germany, uh, in contrast, according to our informants, access to outdoor activities is hardly promoted. Um, by schools. It tends really to happen privately and through outer uh, um, associations. And what is also striking is that adventure perceptions in Germany are shaped by commercial stereotypes of tough adventurers, as Jill already mentioned. Uh, it is also shaped by the awareness of new and changing trends and commercial outdoor brands. Uh, however, in reality, people who associate adventure with these uh, commercial brands and stereotypes are in general not prepared to actually engage um, with adventure in any way. So they don't really want to put in the effort and challenge themselves, uh, but they want uh, to be seen as adventurers. So this sport-oriented, um, or this uh, rather sport-oriented outdoor, uh, outdoor participants, um, they usually distance themselves uh, from these fake adventurers and everything uh, that remind them from that. So also um, adventure offers that are too much um, um, focusing on brands and uh, trendy images. <clears throat> when it comes to commercial adventure activities, we found that all participants said they sometimes do commercial activities, mostly not in their own in their own type of sport they usually participate in. Um, all of them like to do stuff stuff on their own, but they also sometimes do um, yeah organized trips, mostly when they're outside their their home area or on holiday. We also found that there's a lot more uh, potential to do uh, commercial activities in the UK than there is in Germany and Serbia. So that's probably also why you do it on holiday. Um, most of the German participants uh, said that they like commercial activities if it's something they want to learn, like uh, parachuting, Carola, like you, you will be today maybe. Um, and uh, Or if it's something where the risk is too high, if, this, if they want to go on a ski tour and they think, well, that's above my level, I'll, I'll book a guided tour. They, didn't so much talk about any um, negative aspects, whereas the Serbian and UK um, participants um, about the, a lot more about the group itself. They said it's a nice group experience. You meet like-minded people. It's an important aspect to meet other people. Um, they all said it's nice that you have a guide and you can relax. You don't have to organize anything. You can just enjoy the activity. And in terms of negative aspects, um, they found that it's less independent. So you have to rely on the group. You have to wait for someone if someone is slow. Um, and you can't be as independent as you probably would like to be. But they all agreed that commercial activities um, do have their place. And yeah. And then um, one of the really interesting questions we are also asking. There are a lot more really interesting questions. <laughs> Um, one is about the um, the best experience you had outdoors, which is always really, I always get goosebumps when I hear the answers. Um, but uh, we asked what are the three main outcomes that adventure activity had on you? And um, yeah, as you probably can see, it's quite individual, but there are a lot of aspects that we have in our framework, which is good for us, hopefully, because sort of this reach is also, we want to test our, our themes that we just showed you. Um, and see if that's something that's really important for adventurers. So that's that's something we realized. Um, we found that the UK participants talked a bit more about risk and challenge, as was their perception, uh, if you remember, about adventure. Um, and the, the Germans and the Serbians talked more a bit about humbleness and awe and about being in nature and less about the, the actual risk 
in the activity. And um, we just, just uh, because I saw some of, we lost some of the quotes. We're happy to share those slides with you. So if you couldn't read all of it, I think it was just a tiny bit missing. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry about that. Just, yeah. We've got so much to say, you see. <laughs> um, so um, just in conclusion then, just to wrap everything up um, and then we'll, we'll look very briefly at implications for practitioners or um, ideas that we've, we've uh, developed or had so far. So um, what, what, what we've found so far from the interviews is that um, our venture is perceived uh, differently, slightly differently in different cultures, which um, in those three particular nationalities so far from what we've looked at, obviously it's difficult to generalize until we've, we've actually done the whole study. These are preliminary results only. Um, and that um, people get involved as, as we know, we know a lot about how people get involved in the UK, but it's, it's, uh, you, you see that in, in Germany, for example, um, the, um, promotion and, and development of outdoor activities and, and, and residentials like like we find in the UK in schools um, isn't so such a prominent thing in Germany um, and in the UK we have you know we've got the DV schemes um, and uh, scout, scouts associations which are quite um, proactive in in helping young people to develop uh, outdoor um, activity experience um, and um, secondly um, adventurers prefer to uh, independently organize their experiences of course we, we recognize that that is very dependent on whether they're novices or or more experienced adventurers and uh, or whether they want to try something new so we we get that you know there's obviously lots of different influences on those um, but what we found is they tend to engage in commercial adventures and use commercial operators particularly if they're going on holiday and they, and they don't want to um, to uh, spend lots of time familiarizing themselves with the destination and where they might want to go for a mountain bike um, holiday, for instance, um, and or if they want to learn new activities, or indeed if they want the risks kind of managed a little bit so that the, the guide is, is uh, managing their experience a little bit and um, they can just get that feeling of perceived risk rather than actually putting themselves at risk. Um, in terms of subjective well-being benefits, we'd love to say more about um, whether there are cultural differences, but at the moment we're not finding that many, um, apart from the, the slant perhaps a bit more on humbleness and, and the value of natural environment, but I think we, do, we in the UK feel the same as well, so I guess if we had more interview, when we do more interviews, we'll probably find that you know they're all very similar. Um, and, and, but I suppose one point is that I've, the activities and the way we do them and the benefits, the subjective well-being benefits that we receive from them are very individual and very personal. Um, and, there's, and really, there's not at the moment any distinctive uh, cultural patterns. Um, so, yeah, I, I know we keep saying it's preliminary research. We will be looking at it in more detail. So don't, don't assume, please, that we've uh, just made those conclusions already because uh, they, they are at the beginning stages. So final slide. Before we go, we'd like to give some hints or ideas what we think are implications for practitioners in the room, um, especially as we are researchers that like to see our research um, being implicated and not only writing fancy articles published in some journals and, and read them. Um, which reminds me that the main themes that, we, that I just explained to you, we've written an article about that and we hope it will be finished soon so that we can via Belinda maybe share that with someone once it's out or yeah, I hope we can persuade the reviewers to publish. That's another story. <laughs> yeah, first of all, I think you probably should consider the cultural background of the clients and what previous they had. I guess that's not something really new, but I think um, yeah, if you, if you um, just re to remind you, we just heard that there'll be more um, diverse crowd outdoors, so maybe this will be also something to consider. Secondly, um, the word adventure can be perceived differently. Uh, we already mentioned that, but in Germany there's big uh, outdoor companies and hiking providers and tour operators who try not to use the word adventure because they think it's got a negative connotation. So a lot of it is outdoor sports actually, so be a bit cautious about how you use it and maybe explain it to people as well because some people might think it's too, it's not for them, it's too hard stuff. Um, but make sure that the clients are well looked after. That's even for experienced adventurers, they said that they like to be looked after and to feel safe in the environment and make sure that maybe the group have level and that they um, can experience something as a group. And 
last but not least, um, yeah, subjective well-being is very uh, individual. I think we as facilitators practitioners, only give them like the frame or, or the nature or the activity to make their own experiences and everyone will take something special home for them. Um, maybe you can talk to them about it, but I guess it does something to each and every one of us, but it might be differently perceived or there's just different, different issues at different times that um, are important. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much where we are at the moment. And we thought we'd keep the presentation as short as possible. We hope we, I hope we uh, did okay. But we really look forward to all your questions, ideas. Carola and I are happy to talk about cultural differences. She's from the north of Germany. I'm from the south. So there's also some differences already, maybe. And um, Jelena, who can't be here, um, she's the Serbian uh, part of our research team. So we probably can't talk as much about that. Mm. Uh, only about the interviews we, we are aware of. So thanks for having us, and I think it's open for questions now. Thank you. <laughs> oh, by the way, do you want to show our references? Just, uh, yeah. we were talking about just, that. Just, cause just academics, we like to show that we've actually yeah. done some research. Actually, we also have- We're a, not making it up. <laughs> we also have a, a version um, where the, the differences uh, that we explained and didn't show um, well, we, we have it, we can send it to you. So if you send out the presentation, if you do, might be good to have that slide in as well. We just didn't want to have too many slides.